All right, we're good to go. Today's topic is going to be on the difference between polar and linear three bedding ranges. Uh, we'll be focusing mostly on these in tournaments, uh, but the concepts that we'll be talking about, you can apply to cash games as well. Um, and I think they're easily, easily uh, you can transfer these concepts over to cash games to know when you should be using polar ranges versus three bedding. Uh, this topic kind of came from a person on Twitter. Um, what is the difference between polar and linear three bedding ranges? When should I use either of them? And how should I defend, defend versus polar and linear ranges? Uh, we're going to explore everything to do with these two topics. Um, what's the difference between the two? And what does a polar range look like? And what does a linear range look like? Um, when you should use each of them? Stack depth uh, adjustments. So how you should change from linear and polar ranges when uh, your stack depths change and also what to do when facing polar and linear ranges and then we have some examples uh, we'll kind of have a little quiz at the end where I have I think it's four examples and you guys will kind of guess whether you should be using a polar range or a linear range uh, kind of a note caveat here at the bottom all the ranges presented are just kind of basic ranges same as the previous webinars that I presented um, you should adjust these ranges either tighter or looser depending on the tendencies and the skill level of your opponents. Also, um, all these ranges assume a 2.5x open. Uh, you need to be making the proper adjustments uh, when you're facing a 3x open or a 2x open or if you get one of those crazy people that open to like 5x or 4x. So make your judge adjustments accordingly. Um, and uh, as always too, these ranges are, don't try to memorize the ranges like oh should i three bet king seven suited or or and not king eight suited it's more realize the type of hands you should three bet and the type of hands you should flat call and like what type of hands fit into like value three betting ranges what type of hands are good for bluffing three bets so just kind of i like to think of it as buckets so think about what type of buckets that you should put each hand in or myself when i'm playing live i kind of in my head have gotten a good at visualizing the hand grid and I know kind of which areas of the grid I want to do like draw my three bet bluffs from etc but we'll be looking into all that so getting started we'll jump right in uh, what is a linear three betting range so in this example we're gonna look at what a 10% linear three betting range is it's simply well, I put 10% and 15%. This range we looked at is a 10% range. So a 10% linear three betting range simply takes the top 10% of hands and three bets them. All other hands are either folded or flat called. So people might ask, well, what are you bluffing with if you are three betting with a linear range? Your bluffs are simply the bottom portion of your range. And the word bluff in terms of a three bet preflop is not really the correct term because all your bluffs have equity. For example, you three bet with pocket nines or jack 10 suited here. The red hands are going to be your three betting in a 10% linear three betting range. The green hands are going to be called. All the white hands are folded. So in this 10% range, your bluffs are simply like jack 10 suited, queen 10 suited, pocket nines, H, H jack off. They're really good hands and they have a lot of equity against the calling range and they're you're kind of three betting it all for value and we'll get into when you would want to use a linear three betting range more so for this first topic here we want to look at what types of hands we're three betting here versus when we go to the polar three betting range you'll see how the range is different so here you know nines are better we're three betting all our suited broadways ace jack off or better so they're all pretty good hands and then we're just flat calling these ace 10 off king jack offs uh, you know suited aces the other pretty good hands that we're going to play versus a range so linear ranges uh one of the problems with a linear three betting range is that your flatting range becomes extremely weak and opens yourself up to squeezes so if you notice here when we have a good hand we three bet and when we don't have a good three good hand we flat call so that creates a problem in terms of balance because now we know when we don't three bet we have these weaker hands in green 
And when we three bet, we have these stronger hands in red. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it is something that you need to keep in mind that linear ranges uh, create weaker flat calling ranges. So if you see someone, you know, that always uses a linear three betting range, they, they just three bet the top percentages of hands and then they flat call. Now, you know, kind of they have the weaker portions of the range when they just flat call versus if a, versus a more balanced range, uh, you can't attack that as much. So you're kind of opened up to more squeezes behind you. Um, obviously here, all strong hands are three bet preflop. Um, important part here, linear ranges are best used at, at deep stack depths. So when I say deep, I'm talking maybe not even a hundred big blinds. Sure, at 100 big blinds, there's going to be a lot of spots where you want to use a linear range, but even more so at like 150, 200 big blinds. The key thing is here, when you use a linear three betting range, you want to be deep enough that you don't really care if you get four bet because you have strong hands and you can just call. So you want the stacks to be deep enough to call four bets, especially if you're in position. So for example, ace queen suited, if someone four bets you and they're kind of using a balanced four bet range and they have some four bet bluffs and it's not just aces, kings, and queens, if they four bet you, you're happy to call four bet with ace queen suited in position when you're say 200 big blinds deep. Um, maybe the four bet would be to like say 20, you know, somewhere between 20 and 25 big blinds. You call, so now there's 50 big blinds in the pot. If you were 200 big blinds deep, you still have 175 big blinds behind. So you, you have a stack to pot ratio of around three to four. So still some post flop play. Um, so you want to be using these linear ranges at deep stacks. So like I talked about before, cash games, these work really well. Um, early stages of tournaments works really well. They're very bad at shallow stack depths. So the reason they, a linear range is really bad at a shallow stack depth is because let's say you're playing 50 big blinds deep and you three bet King Jack suited here to say 10 or 11 big blinds over an open and now your opponent goes all in for 50 big blinds uh you have to fold king jack suited now pre-flop which really sucks because you've taken a hand that has a lot of equity and plays well post-flop and i wouldn't say turn it into a bluff i don't like that term um especially pre-flop because king jack suited has a lot of equity but you're unable to call the four bet jam and so that's why if you're, say, 200 big blinds deep and someone four bet you, and especially if it was a small four bet, you could peel with King Jack suited if you wanted to in position. But at the 50 big blinds, you know, when you're going to get jammed on all in, that's when it becomes really hard to use a linear three betting range because these pocket nines, pocket tens, jack 10 suited, um, queen 10 suited, these hands, you don't want to be folding two four bets all in. So that's kind of the pros and cons of linear ranges. Let's look at polar ranges and we'll kind of see the contrast of that. Uh, in polar ranges, the strongest hands and weakest hands are three bet. When I say the weakest hands, and I'll say this a bunch of times today, I just don't mean you four bet or three bet four do soft, which is the weakest hand you get dealt. I mean, you three bet the weakest hands that you would play in a range. So this hand grid over here, uh, the red is our three bet value range, which would be jacks plus ace king, ace queen suited, king queen suited. And then the green is our flat calls. The blue is our three bet bluffs. So our three bet bluffs are ace deuce, three ace five suited, eight seven, seven six, six five suited, and ace ten off. So this is in contrast to the linear range where we don't three bet these fringier hands and we'd rather three bet these suited broadway hands uh, we've now moved our three bet bluffs to balance our value range to the break even hands that were kind of indifferent between folding and three betting and so all these the the key thing is um the blue hands are still profitable three bets now the reason i brought it up before if you three bet four deuce off which you sometimes see people do when they're three betting a so-called polar range they three bet four deuce off. They are losing money three betting four deuce off. It will never, almost never be profitable to three bet four deuce off. So, but three betting eight, seven suited, seven, six suited, they're still good hands and they are still profitable. We are never going to three bet a hand that is not profitable. Uh, 
So Matthews had a good question. Are ACE2 suited through ACE5 suited weaker than ACE6 through ACE9 suited? They're actually stronger hands to them than they're actually stronger than the ACE6 through ACE9 suited, but we like to three bet them because they have more equity and we have more playability post flop. And so we'd rather three bet the ACE2 through ACE5 suited because they just have a little bit more equity than the ACE6. The ACE6 through ACE9 suited just aren't quite strong enough and, uh, we want that little extra playability um, with those wheel suited aces. So one of the key uh, differences with a polar range is that you're going to have a stronger flatting range. So now compared to the linear range, we had a lot of weak hands in our flatting range. In this polar range, we have a lot of strong hands that were flat calling. So ace jack suited, ace queen off, king jack suited, queen jack suited, all these suited broadways, pocket tens, nines, eights. Uh, we have a lot of, we have a very strong flatting range that's pretty happy to call a three bet. So we're a lot more protected versus a squeeze. Um, so keep that in mind just for yourself. And also when you see someone using a polar range three bet, um, that they're going to have a lot stronger flatting range. And one of the, um, one of the key things also for like exploiting people is that and this kind of the, one of the main parts of this webinar is a lot of people will only use a polar range or they'll only use a linear range and they don't know how to switch between the two of when they should use the two ranges. And so a lot of times if you see someone using a polar range, they're just always going to use a polar range versus if they use a linear range, they're just always going to lose it, use a linear range. And so you can kind of exploit that and kind of know what type of hands people are going to be flat calling. Uh, with a polar range, it's best used on shallow stacks or from the big blind. So you want to use the polar ranges on the shallow stacks because if you three bet a hand like king seven suited or ace ten offsuit and then they four bet shove, you're perfectly fine that you're like, okay, it doesn't suck that much to have to fold that hand preflop versus in the previous example, if you three bet ace jack suited and then someone shoves and now you have to fold, you're going to be more unhappy having to fold ace jack suited versus the ace 10 off. Um, and then from the big blind, you want to be very polar in your three bets because you want to protect your flatting range uh, against a lot of opponents, especially against good uh, aggressive opponents You because you're getting such a good price and you're going to be flat calling a ton of hands. So you're going to just have some stronger flat calls in your range. And uh, like I said before, never three bet an unprofitable hand. Don't three bet seven do suited and say that you're a polar. Um, let's look at um, Jerry asks, it looks like you have way more combinations of bluff hands than value hands. Is that on purpose? Well, let's count it up here. Um, 6, 12, 18, 24 plus 16 combos of ace king. That's 40. And then so 44 value combos. And then we have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, uh, 32. And we have 48 bluff combos. So we're actually spot on 48 value, 48 bluff. That's actually probably a few more bluff combos than I want. You probably want to be more like, if you have 48 value, I'd say like 36. But I don't think there's any really hard, fast uh, rule. Um, so the, the thing to notice here is that one reason I don't three bet a lot of offsuit combos in a polar range is because it's very easy to get unbalanced if you three bet these offsuit combos. So a, a really good, like quick tip is if you see someone three betting hands like King Jack offsuit and Ace 10 off, Ace 9 off, and they show up with all these offsuit combos, they're almost for sure three bet bluffing way too much and you can just start four betting them a ton. And just three betting the suited combos helps you keep your bluff in check because there's only four combos of every suited one. And so um, it makes it a lot easier to control your, your bluff to value ratio when you only three bet suited combos. So that's why I only three bet the suited ones and keep an eye out for people that three bet all these offsuit combos. Like if you start seeing them three bet King 10 off or ace 10 off or ace eight offsuit, like they're just gonna be three bet bluffing way too much and you should just start four betting them. So. Quick note there.
Uh, and then a lot of these other questions I will get to at the end when we have our questions uh, segment, but you can keep typing them in. So now that we've looked at both polar and linear ranges, reasons to use a linear range. So number one, deep stack poker, 100 plus big blinds deep. You are deep enough to call a four bet and you're not as worried about having to fold equity preflop. Uh, another key point reasons to use linear range is positions where you don't flat call often. So small blind versus button raises with a strong player in the big blind. When you're in the small blind, you're going to want to be using a linear range because when you flat call, the big blind is going to be getting a very, very good price now. And now the pot's going to be going three ways a lot of the time. And by three betting the small blind against a wide button range using a linear range, you get the pot heads up. You're going to win the pot more pre-flop. And uh, it's just you're going to create more equity um, playing the pot heads up than you do three-way, especially if it's a strong player in the big blind. If there's a weak player in the big blind, then I would flat call more. Um, the other key point where you want to use the positions where you'd want to linear range a lot is like middle position. Um, there's just very few hands that are profitable flat calls. If you're say facing like if the low jack opens and you're in the high jack or say under the gun two opens and you're in middle position, it's uh, there's very few profitable hands to flat call, especially if there's aggressive players behind. And so you can kind of use a tighter linear range and not flat call very often. Um, in those positions, you'll often find that a linear three betting range and kind of limiting the hands that you flat call is going to be uh, much better versus when we'll see in the next slide. Uh, later position, like on the button, you want to use a more polar range because you can flat call a lot more profitable. Same thing as the big blind. It's just much more profitable to flat call because you're uh, closing the action. So in those positions, it's much better to use a polar range. Uh, the other important reason to use a linear range is to isolate a very weak player. So against a weak player, always three bet linear. Don't worry about three betting polar against weak or poor players. Number one, they call too much. So you don't want to be three betting. You don't need to three bet as many bluffs and you can three bet wider for value, which is exactly what a linear range is. And number two, you want to isolate the pot heads up. Uh, you're just going to have way more equity in a heads-up pot than a multi-way pot. So against weaker players, you definitely want to use a linear three-betting range. Uh, reasons to use a polar range. Uh, short stacked, so sub 50 big blind poker. You don't want to fold a strong hand pre-flop if you are shoved on. Um, now the contrary to the linear range, positions where you want to flat call a lot. So big blind versus an early position range or on the button versus a raise from any position. You're going to be flat calling on the button a lot. Um, a lot of people think you should three bet the highest percentage of hands on the button, which is not true. I think you should, your, the button will probably be your lowest three bet percentage of most, uh, of almost any position because you can profitably flat call because you know you're going to be in position. For example, the cutoff, you want to three bet more than the button because you want to get the, you want to knock that button out of the pot when you're in the cutoff or when you're in the small blind, even though you're out of position, you want to three bet more because you want to knock the big blind out of the pot. Uh, another area to use a polar range is against aggressive four betting players. So in the previous example, the weak player is just going to call and they're not going to four bet very often versus aggressive players who four bet uh, often. Um, you want to use a more polar range because you don't want to have to fold out equity like when you're short stacked. Um, three bet sizing. So a linear range is always going to have a smaller sizing than a polar range. You're going to be, um, you want to be able to call a four bet and your range sets up better where you're three betting when you're three betting a linear range, you just want to have a smaller sizing a for calling a four bet and B you're going to be three betting more value hands. So, um, just kind of like when you're betting the flop, if it's a flop that you're going to bet more often, you should bet smaller. If it's a flop that you're not going to bet often, then you should bet larger. So the polar ranging, the linear ranges in position like three and a half times the original open, the polar range is going to be four times the original open. And, 
out of position, the linear range is going to be four times the open versus the polar range is going to be four and a half to five times the open. Um, and these obviously vary on stack size. The smaller the stack, the smaller the three bet can be. So if you're playing off of, say, 30 big blinds, you don't need a three bet to five X on the polar range, maybe three bet to four X um, versus on the larger stacks. You can even go a little bit larger. Uh, in terms of squeezing, if there's some flat calls in the middle, um, when you're squeezing, you don't need to size up as much because that range is already weaker. So what we looked at with the linear range, we know a linear range has a weaker flat calling range. So if you're playing really deep sacked and you have someone that flat called, you know, they already probably have a weak hand. So my three and a half in position open, maybe I squeeze now to four X instead of three and a half, add like a half a big blind, um, Versus a polar range, maybe I add a hole, make it 5x because they have a stronger flattening range. You can kind of use your judgment there. These are all kind of guidelines, and the sizing is as, as important as picking the right type of hands and the right frequencies. Um, facing a linear three betting range. So when you're facing linear ranging, linear ranges, four betting becomes attractive. Um, and your hand playability matters when you're four betting. So say you're facing a 10% linear three bet, you might four bet like the top four to five percent of hands. Um, and the reason four betting becomes more attractive, especially if you're deep stacked against a linear range is that the person is going to be able to continue with a lot of their, uh, three betting range because they're strong hands and especially if they're in position, they're going to flat call a lot. And so you can get a lot of value from the top of your range. Um, as a note from before squeezing more versus flatters whom use a linear range. So attack weaker flatting ranges when you know someone uses a linear range, uh, and then they flat call, you know, they don't have that top 10, 15% of hands, um, because they just chose to flat call instead of three bet. So you can squeeze a lot more and isolate yourself into a heads up pot with the extra dead money in. Um, four betting also becomes attractive against linear ranges because you can force your opponents to fold high equity hands. So if someone is three betting a linear range and they're three betting hands like pocket nines and pocket tens, you can, or say jack 10 suited, queen 10 suited, you can four bet and put them in a really tough spot with those hands. And if you don't make them fold pre-flop, it's easy to make them fold on a lot high variety of flops. And so four betting becomes very attractive against these linear ranges. And um, yeah, just uh, kind of what I've been talking about. The three better can continue wide versus a four better. So you can gain a lot of value with the top of your range. Uh, facing polar ranges, um, it's the exact opposite. You should four bet much less against polar ranges. And if you do choose to four bet, hand playability does not matter really at all. Uh, what matters is having a blockers to the five bet shoving and having blockers basically to the value portion. So if we look here at the polar range, it's jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, king, and king, queen suited. What are the most important cards to have? You know, good hands to four bet would be, well, Ace King would be one of the best hands because you block aces, you block kings, you block ace king, you block ace queen, you block king queen suited. Hands like, you know, king queen offsuit becomes a good hand to four bet because you block all the ace king combos, pocket kings, pocket queens. You want to have hands that cards in your hand that block this value portion of the range. And you don't want to have cards that block the uh, weaker parts of the range, the, the bluffing. And the reason you want to be your hand playability doesn't matter. Like I might four bet a hand like a seven offsuit be. And the reason I can four bet a seven offsuit against a very polar range is one. I block hands like aces, ace, king, aces, ace, king and ace, queen. Um, but two, this range is almost never going to flat call. If I four bet, he's going to jam with jacks plus all these red hands. He's going to go all in with, and then he's going to fold all the blue hands. And so he, we almost never see a flop uh, when we're facing a polar range and we four bet. So hand playability really doesn't matter at all. Versus if I'm playing a linear range, I never want to three bet or four bet a seven offsuit because he can flat call with a wide variety of hands.
Um, the key point here is slow playing big hands like pocket aces and pocket kings becomes much more attractive when you're facing a polar range, especially often in position with 50 big blinds or less. Having no four bet range can be correct. Um, so in tournaments, it becomes really profitable against aggressive three betters who use polar ranges to just flat call with aces and kings. Um, and the reason is, is that, and especially aces, aces more so than kings, but look at these bluffs that someone might be choosing, like ace five suited through ace deuce suited, like king seven suited, ace 10 off, suited connectors. Those hands have horrific equity against pocket aces. And you want to just flat call and let them flop a pair um, rather than they're just going to fold those hands uh, pre-flop if you four bet. So like a popular hand you might see one, see one, someone uh, three bet with is like king jack offsuit with 50 big blinds, which we talked about in our three betting uh, stack size video. And you don't want to four bet when they have king jack offsuit. You want to just flat call and let the flop come king high or jack high because then they're going to stack off with their top pair when you have aces or when you have pocket kings. So slow playing becomes really important against polar ranges. Uh, deep, and you'll see a lot of weak players just get scared and they just start shoving. Um, they start just shoving all in with like their aces and kings and queens. When in fact it can become profitable, more profitable to flat call rather than shove, because you want to keep all their bluffs in the pot. Um, especially, so often in position, this is with shorter stacks when people aren't going to be flatting four bet and they're just going to be playing a shove or fold strategy. So that is kind of a basic rundown of the topics. Now we're kind of a fun part of this PowerPoint is we have some examples. We have four examples. Look, you can look at it as a quiz. Um, basically, I have four situations set up and I want you to take a second and think about whether you should be using a polar range or a linear range in these examples. There's no whole cards or no nothing. So just we're just basing this off of position and stack size and I don't know if there's I don't think any of the examples I gave notes like this is a bad player or a good player so we're basing these decisions off of stack size and position and so I want you to think about whether you should use a polar or linear range and I'll give you guys you know 10 to 15 seconds and then I'll give you kind of a rundown um, of what range you should be using um, so first example here we are on the button with 100 big blinds on the button facing a cutoff 3x open. Uh, you can consider this kind of early stages of the tournament. So in this example, should we be using a polar range or a three betting range on the button versus a cutoff 3x with 100 big blinds? So we got a couple of people saying linear, Three linear, one polar. Some more linear and polar. So this one kind of has a combination of both. Uh, I would be using a lot of polar three betting in this spot. You can make a case for linear, especially if this is a weak cutoff player. Linear becomes a little more attractive, but being on the button, we're going to be flat calling a lot of hands. And so being on the button here, I'd rather flat call with a ton of hands because the button, we're probably going to have the most polar three betting range of any position. And so since we're going to be flat calling a lot, I want to protect ourselves against blinds squeezing. Um, a couple of things that would make me change my mind are one, let's say the uh, small blind is a very, very aggressive squeezer. So this is really important here. If the small blind is a very uh, aggressive squeezer, then you for sure want to use a polar three betting range because you want to protect and have a stronger flatting range um, that you can uh, flat call his squeeze with. If the small blind and big blind don't squeeze very often, they're kind of tight players and they just call or fold, then you can make a case for a linear three betting range as well. Um, 
because you're not going to get squeezed very often. So in this spot, you can make a case for either a linear or a polar range, uh, but just kind of the spot that being on the button versus a cutoff, I'm probably going to use a polar range and just use my position against the cutoff and flat call a lot here. Uh, this example here, we are in the low jack. Uh, we have 100 big blinds in the low jack. Under the gun plus one opens. Uh, we to a 3x we're playing 100 big blinds deep in this position here should we be using a polar range or a linear range so a couple polars uh, see a few linear ranges So it's kind of 50-50 here on polar versus linear. So here in the low jack, uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of flat calling here. Uh, when we flat call in the low jack here, uh, we're just letting a bunch of people with a cut. We're probably going to play a five-way pot, you know, four-way pot. There's five other ranges behind us that can squeeze. So here in the low jack, we're in middle position. We're just going to have a tight linear range here. And we're really not going to be doing a ton of flat calling. I think people flat call here too often with hands like deuces through fives and like weak suited connector hands. So in these positions, we're just going to have a linear range. We want a three bet a hand like pocket tens, pocket jacks, because they, those hands play way better heads up and they play way better in a, uh, they play a lot better at a shorter stack to pot ratio. So by three betting, we reduce the stack to pot ratio and we also get the pot heads up. And also in general, um, population doesn't four bet as much. So a lot of people are really scared to three bet a hand like pocket tens in this position uh, or pocket jacks or say ace queen suited because they're scared if, oh, this early position raiser four bets me, then I'm gonna be put in a tough spot. But in general, people just do not four bet enough. They flat call. And so I would rather three bet a linear range here, knock out all these five players behind me, play a heads up pot with a strong hand in position with a stack to pot ratio that, you know, say we three bet to a thousand here, then there's gonna be 2K in the pot. We have 9K back. So now it's a four and a half to one stack to pot ratio. This hand's gonna be much easier for us to play versus if we have pocket tens and we flat call, we go four, five ways to the pot. It's just really hard for us to win the pot unless we flop a set. So, um, Yes, and what Bob just said uh, is linear because we have a lot of people left to act. Um, we just want to we want to knock people out and play this pot heads up and uh, having a linear range. Now it's gonna be a tighter linear range because we're facing an early position open, so we might even go tighter. We're probably gonna go tighter than the linear range I presented earlier. Let's say this person is opening, you know, s somewhere between fifteen and twenty percent of hands. Maybe we just three bet the top. 7% of hands, like maybe half of them, maybe even a little less than that, three bet the top 5% of hands. But um, flat calling here is not as attractive as an option with this many people behind us. Um, next example, uh, we have 40 big blinds. The We are in the big blind with 40 big blinds. The cutoff has opened to two and a half big blinds. Uh, do we want to be linear or polar in this position? So you see four polars, five polars. All right, good. Everyone gets this right. This is the easiest one probably. This is polar, and I don't think uh, we don't want to make a case here for a linear range. So this is going to be pretty much your definition of a polar range here. We're going to be flat calling a lot. There's a, you know, one big blind ante here so we're getting a good price we're going to want to call a lot and we're going to be putting our opponent into kind of a shove or fold mode if we uh three bet because he's short stack so we're going to be very polar and you know hand playability doesn't matter that much because we're so shallow so hands like a7 offsuit or even like king 10 offsuit hands just block their jamming range are the type of hands that we want to three bet
And last example, we're in the small blind. The button has opened to 300 chips. Uh, the big blind is here for 100. Let's assume the big blind is a regular that you know plays a lot of tournaments. Uh, so do you want to be polar or linear here in this position? Okay, see a couple of polars, a few linears. So here, you definitely want to be linear with your three betting range. You don't want a three bet polar. Um, we want to knock this big blind out of the pot, and we want to play a heads up pot against a wide button range uh, with a shallow stack to pot ratio. So we always want to be three betting linear from the small line versus late position opens. And here, we can have a wider linear range because the button could be opening. Like if I'm on the button here, I'm probably opening close to 50% of hands, like 45% of hands. So as a small blind, you could probably three bet the top 20% of hands and be fine. So that means three betting hands like ace-10 offsuit, ace-jack offsuit, all your suited broadways, all your suited connectors, like even hands like pocket sevens and better. So you can three bet quite wide and quite aggressively here from the small blind versus this 300 button open. Uh, did anyone else lose sound? I had one person say they lost the sound. Can people hear me? All right. Um, Kenneth, I think that's you. Everyone else seems to have good audio. So, uh, I believe that was the last example. Yeah. So in summary, linear ranges are great for deep stack poker early in tournaments. Uh, polar, polar ranges are great for shallow stack poker deep in tournaments. Uh, you want to use linear ranges more in early position, polar ranges more in late position where you're going to be flat calling a lot more. Uh, knowing how your opponent will act, react will help you know what type of range to use. So this is important. Against players that never four bet, unless they have like aces or kings, you can three bet a lot more linear because you you are uh, you should just three bet linear because you, they don't four bet often enough. Versus players that four bet often, you want to start using more polar ranges, um, making sure you're not having to fold out a lot of equity. Um, linear ranges are going to use a smaller sizing than polar ranges we talked about. And then in early position, linear ranges often help to get the pot heads up. Um, and so we can three bet more in early position. And it forces the late position players really. Like the other thing too is in early position, like say we three bet in that one example uh, right here. Like we force the five opponents behind us to kind of play their hands head face up. So if they flat call, we can kind of put them on, you know, uh, kind of a weaker range that wants to see a flop hands like king, queen suited, pocket tens, pocket nines, and it becomes very easy to play against. Or when they four bet, most players don't four bet aggressively enough. So we're pretty confident they have those top three to four percent of hands like ace, king and pocket queens are better. And it's also very easy for us to play against that range. And so it becomes very easy to play, uh, much easier to play our range versus when we flat call. We don't know when they squeeze, like where they are in their ranges. And just, I think people will have to play more face up in general when we take this linear spot rather than polar spot. So, um, yeah, so this obviously for pokercoaching.com, for you, got, for you, those of you that are on your free trial, highly recommend signing up for the paid uh, subscription. $39 a month, you get a big discount on the one year for $249 for the year. And then on the three year, you get for $499 for a three year membership, you're saving a lot of money. Plus, Jonathan's throwing in all those, a ton of webinars. I don't even know how many there was. There, he just, You get like an extra like 20 or 30 hours of webinars when you pay for the three year. Um, for the $500, it sounds like a really big investment but let's say your average buying tournament is $300. Um, it doesn't take a ton. If we increase your ROI by 10%, you're gonna make all that back in your next 10 tournaments 
or 12 tournaments, whatever it is. And I just think you can easily p plug a lot of simple leaks and really increase your ROI in tournaments, especially the small field, uh, smaller buy-in ones where you see people making the most mistakes. And you have all the interactive quizzes. Uh, I've been making a ton of quizzes. Uh, the webinars, I'm writing articles. Um, we also have Alex Fitzgerald, Jonathan Little. And I just think there's a lot of great content right now and uh, highly recommend signing up for poker coaching. And now, maybe for you guys' favorite part of the webinar, let's jump in some, uh, uh, let's jump in the questions. I'm going to scroll my back, my um, questions back from the beginning of the webinar, and I'll kind of work through them. We've been at it for 40 minutes, so we have about 20 minutes for questions. So let's start rifling through them. If, if you don't hear me talking, it's because I'm reading the questions in between, so that takes a second, and then figuring out the best way to phrase it. So Breno asks, um, in stack size adjustments webinar, thought that big stack, it was best for hands like 8-7 suited. And having a big stack would equate to having a lot of big blinds. And when you're deeper in terms of big blinds, that's when hands like eight, seven suited go up way in value. You are correct in that, but just you having a big stack doesn't mean eight, seven suited is a better hand. It's more about the effective stacks and effective stacks mean taking into account what, um, what stack sizes your opponents have. So if you have a hundred big blinds and everyone else has 30 big blinds, then eight, seven suited goes down a lot in value. Uh, we talked about the value and the bluff. I think they were pretty close. Um, I don't know exactly the hard math on that. I would say in a polar range, if you have, there, there, there's a mathematical way to solve it. And I would assume if you, you don't need to have as many bluff combos as value. If you have something like a two to one ratio, I think you're doing just fine. If you're somewhere around, you know, say 48 value, and then you have around the 25 to 30 bluff combos, I think you're going to be doing just fine. Um, again, don't worry about the exact hands that I put in the ranges, more about the types of hands. And uh, I think that two to one value to bluff ratio on a polar range will be doing you just fine in these small stakes tournaments. So Lewis has a very good question. I've heard that ace nine suited through ace six suited is better to three bet as you can flop more top pairs rather than small suited aces. Can you explain why you prefer the smaller ones? Um, in that linear, it depends on stack size. So if you're three betting a polar range at like 40 big blinds, then ace nine suited through ace six suited, flopping those top pairs with the nine and the six would make a lot more sense. Um, when you're like three betting at like 40 big blinds, ace nine suited and ace eight suited be can become good hands to three bet bluff with because they have good blockers and they flop good top pairs. Um, but when you're deeper at like 100 big blinds, 150, I'd much rather three bet ace deuce through ace five suited than the ace nine through ace six suited because having that additional straight equity uh, is very, very uh, helpful when playing deep stack poker. So the shallower you are, the ace nine through ace six suited become better three bets and the, strong, the deeper you are, the ace deuce through ace five suited become better three bets. Uh, Trent asks, what position are these ranges from? Those aren't for any ranges. Those, those um, ranges that I presented, Trent, were just examples of what a linear range was and polar range. So it was just meant to know the difference between them. So your ranges should be adjusted for every position. So in early position, you're obviously going to have a very, very tight range, linear range. But say small volume versus button, maybe your linear three betting range is like 15 to 20%. Alan asks, uh, when three betting and deciding on a linear versus polar range, are you using an effective stack size versus the razor or against all remaining players? This is a very good question. And so it kind of depends. Say you are, the opener has 100 big blinds, you have 100 big blinds, then everyone else has 20 big blinds. Um, you have to be careful with a linear range there because you three bet, say, king jack suited, 
now one of these 20 big blind stacks goes all in behind you. They have a very strong range and you're putting a really tough spot where you probably have to call it off with King Jack suited against the short stacks. So you need to be careful um, when there's a lot of short stacks behind you because if they pick up a hand, then you have to call it off. But you can remember also though, like once you three bet, like these 20 big blind stacks, they're probably only gonna stick it in with the top five to 7% of hands. And so it's not gonna happen that often. And if you do have a hand like say Jack 10 suited, you still have decent equity against hands like ace king and ace queen. Sometimes they'll have pocket nines, you have two overs. So you wanna have um, like reasonable hands when there's uh, you know stacks behind you. But even in a polar range, like your bluffs are still going to be strong enough where if one of the short stacks jams behind you, it's not the biggest disaster in the world to have to call it off with eight seven suited or king seven suited. So Laura asks, do I use a mixed strategy rather than a pure polar strategy? So Laura's question is asking if I use a mixed strategy where I might three bet a hand 50% of the time and call it 50% of the time versus a pure strategy where I only three bet this hand or I only call this hand. And here's my thing on pure versus mixed strategies. Um, when a strategy is mixed, so let's say you're using a solver like Pio Solver, uh, and it's saying that you should three bet ace jack offsuit 50% of the time and you should flat call ace jack offsuit 50% of the time. It's using a mixed strategy. It's mixing up. So it's ace jack. It's trying to balance its flatting range and its three betting range. So when a strategy is mixed, it means the value of three betting ace jack and the value of calling three ja ace jack are the exact same. So the only time that Pio Solver or any of the solvers that you look at uses a mixed strategy is when the values are the same. If it's way more profitable to like, for example, you'll never see a mixed strategy almost with aces because it's either going to be way more profitable to three bet them versus basically whenever you're deep stack or in some of those situations that I said against polar, you know, if you get three bet and you have 30 big blinds, you know, it will just say pure flat call with aces because you block their value range and you should flat call. So what I'm getting at here is, Mixed strategies, if you're playing against a perfect opponent, yes, you might want to have a mixed strategy. But what a mixed strategy is, is basically the uh, inputs you get in. So the tendency of your opponent matters much more. So if your opponent flat calls too much or your opponent folds too much or your opponent plays poorly pre-flop or your opponent doesn't four bet enough, like these are all going to make one of those two three betting or flatting way more profitable than the other. So... When using a mix, if something, let's say you're looking at a solver and it says using a mixed strategy, basically that means take your opponent's tendencies into account and only use that one that exploits that tendency the most. Um, hopefully I explained that the best. Um, that's kind of a key thing with a lot of the solvers that people look at nowadays. Those size guidelines I gave were for three bets with no callers. So like I said, uh, if they're like linear three betting ranges or people are using and they flat call, you don't really need to up your sizes a ton. You should up them some, but remember they're gonna have weak ranges. But when people have stronger ranges, you want a three bet a little bit larger. So you can add you know, a half a big blind to a one big blind per flat caller. Uh, Jerry asks, if you play with the same player and don't want the bet sizing to be exploitable, which sizing would you go with for both linear and polar ranges? Um, these ranges are set up where you're balanced in both ways, and I don't think you need to worry about You can use a smaller sizing and have a linear range, and you can use a larger sizing and have a polar range. And it doesn't matter if your opponent knows that you have a polar range or have a linear range. Uh, it's going to be tough for them to exploit. Um, just because you have strong and weak hands in both range. Uh, Ken asks, what percentage of hands should we be three betting? Uh, it's kind of a complicated question, but in general, you're going to three bet a lot more from like, I guess later position opens that have, you can have a wider value range. Um, against early position opens, you're going to have a very tight value range. And so, 
uh, I recommend looking up some basic preflop charts to, to start with. Um, you can find a lot of them on the internet. Uh, but in terms of from three betting, I think your overall three betting range at a nine handed tournament, I would guess is somewhere around eight to 10% should be probably more closer to like 8%, but an early position that might be three or 4%. And then like the small blind, it might be like 18%. So it's going to vary a lot by position. So Ken says his, uh, oh, this, I missed the add on to the question. His poker tracker four database has him at a 5.7% overall three betting range. Is that good or bad? What percentage am I looking? I would say that's a little tight. I'd probably try to get it up into the seven to 8% at a minimum. Um, if I saw that 5.7, I would kind of assume it's too tight of a range and I'd just be overfolding to three bets would be my adjustment. If I saw an 8%, that's kind of where I would say, okay, um, anything over that, if I saw like 10 or 11%, I would assume they're a very aggressive, um, three better. So it's more prof David asks, is it more profitable to call a raise from the button than it is to three bet it in position where you're facing your forcing your opponent to play a larger pot with a weaker range out of position? Um, yes and no. So let's look at a hand like King Queen offsuit versus the cutoff open. I'm gonna be doing a lot of flat calling with King Queen off on the button versus a cutoff because the cutoff is opening a ton of suited kings like King Five suited, King Six suited, King Seven suited. King Jack offsuit, King 10 offsuit, probably should be opening King 9 offsuit. So basically we dominate a ton of hands with King Queen off, but those hands are now folding to three bets. So when we three bet King Queen off, our opponent folds a lot of hands that we dominate. So we're playing against a wider range. Um, you wanna always be thinking when you're three betting, like you wanna be three betting hands that like can get called by dominated hands, but also uh, fold out better hands. So there's just a lot more hands that are way more profitable to call than three bet because you can dominate a lot more of the cutoffs wide opening range by flat calling than by three betting. You kind of, when you three bet the button against a cutoff, you kind of let him off the hook and he folds a lot of his weaker opens. Give me one second. Appreciate all the comments. There's people liking the con uh, the content. Uh, Lewis, when it, if a player doesn't fold to any three bets when deep, what three betting strategy should we use? Always a linear strategy. If the person calls too many three bets, use a linear strategy. That's why against weaker players, normally one of their mistakes is they don't fold the three bets. So we just want to use a linear three betting strategy and three betting hands like King Jack suited. They still call with hands like jack eight suited jack 10 offsuit etc all these hands that we still dominate um they just play very weak against those uh linear ranges um Interesting. Jonathan normally recommends a two to one bluff to value ratio preflop. Are we doing the opposite as an exploit in lower stakes? Um, in general, in my opinion, is people don't fold a ton. And so especially, I guess, when we're using a polar range, the reason to use a lot more bluff combos than value combos would be that in general, you should be flat calling a lot more than four betting against a polar range. And when they flat call, some of your bluffs are now going to turn into value hands on the flop. So, for example, you three bet ace five suited and they call and now the flop comes ace high. That's no longer a bluff. So you need to have more hands in there. So you still have bluffs on the ace high board. Uh, in general, people don't fold and they call way too much. So I'm not as interested to having as many bluff combos and rather have more value combos. So they're against good players 
you're going to want to have more bluffs because a lot of your bluffs are going to turn into value hands on a flop and then you need those other bluffs that you had to to uh exploit them um i hope that makes sense uh ryan Asked about having a short bankroll and going to try to make poker my day, day job. Any word of advice? Uh, have a lot of money saved up on the side. You don't want to be drawing your expenses from your poker, especially when you have a short bankroll. Uh, Vinny asked, he was at my table in a hand where an under the gun player open and under the gun plus one three bet and I four bet jammed for 30 to 35 big blinds. He asked, do I have any four bet bluffs in that jam range? Um, no, it's going to be pretty much just a linear range and just a really tight linear range, like probably jacks plus an ace king. Um, I don't, I would have to have a read that under the gun plus one is three betting way too much to be going really wide there, but it's just going to be a linear jamming range. Um, someone asked, will I have a webinar on post flop game and it's a good question because I haven't covered any post-flop stuff. And the reason I have not is because pre-flop, you need to have really, really solid pre-flop fundamentals before you get into post-flop play. And a lot of post-flop problems that people have can be solved by like mistakes pre-flop. So if you can fix people's, this is how I do my coaching is I always focus on pre-flop first and then go into post-flop because you solve a lot of mistakes when you have solid pre-flop fundamentals that sets you up better in front of the flop. And then you take it further when you have really good flop fundamentals, like C betting fundamentals, that sets you, sets you up better for the turn. And so kind of when people are like on the river, they're like, oh, I got to the river and I don't have any bluffs, or I feel like I'm having to call too wide with weak hands on the river, it's because previous streets, like the turn and the flop that you're misplaying that are setting you up poorly um later on uh two more minutes i'll pick out last couple of good questions that i see eric said do you recommend three betting a higher percentage on the big blind i don't see a lot of three bets on the big blind these days yes uh go watch my webinar from a week and a half ago on big blind defense and i talked about that is one of the biggest exploits right now is three betting more from the big blind because people don't see it very often and they react very poorly. Uh, for those of you that asked to see some of the ranges later on, this will be posted on YouTube and you can take a, back, a look back. All right, we're right at an hour. Thank you uh, very much, everyone. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to relook at some of the slides, they'll be posted on YouTube for the replay. Uh, that will be tweeted out on the Poker Coaching account. Uh, hopefully, you guys picked up some stuff here. Um, I am flying out to Florida tonight on a red eye. I will be at Seminole Hard Rock this week. So if any of you are at Seminole Hard Rock this week, uh, come say hello. I'm playing tournaments all week there. So come say hello if you're at Seminole Hard Rock. And, yep, that's it. Good luck to everyone at the tables. And I will see you. My next webinar is on the 24th. And I'm trying to remember what the topic was. Uh, I will tweet out the top again. I already made the I made the PowerPoint and everything, and now I'm drawing a blank on what the uh, topic was. But I'll tweet that out in the next few days, promoting the next webinar. But I believe it was on April 24th is the next one. So in two weeks, you'll see me again.
and um, I'll keep you guys updated on what that topic will be. And uh, as always, um, if you guys have any questions for my articles that I write or topics for webinars, tweet at me. It's um, my um, Twitter is at McMato Poker, M C M A T T O Poker. So you can tweet at me with topics that you would like discussed in the uh, webinars or in the articles. Um, and also, you can visit my website, mattafflick.com, to reach me at email. And I am considering reopening coaching a little bit and taking on a couple of students possibly before the World Series. Um, so I haven't fully decided yet. I'll decide after Hard Rock. But if you're interested in the coaching before the World Series, um, you can uh, send me an email for, through my website, mattafflick.com. There's a contact me page. Send me back that. If I don't get back to you this week, it's because I'm in Florida. And uh, I'll try to get back to you. And I'll let you guys know if I'm going to take on a couple of students before, uh, before uh, Hard Rock. So... Awesome, guys. I will uh, talk to you soon and see you in a couple weeks.